Well, let's get into it. We'll start with Sam McClure. We'll bring him in as part of Footy Classified's team. And Sam's been covering the player end of this tonight, which Caroline forecast off the top of the show. Welcome to you, Sam. The dispute between the players and the league is very real and it's escalating. Yeah, it certainly is. Good evening to you, Hutchie. Tonight, the AFL and its players, they're in fierce disagreement, as Caro said, in regards to money. Now, the AFLPA and its board finished a meeting just before 8 o'clock tonight where they rubber-stamped an offer for a 50% pay cut for the next eight Eight weeks. Now, I can tell you, tonight at AFL House, that has not gone down particularly well. It's not enough, according to highly placed league sources, and what's more, it shouldn't have been leaked. But the players would say in response they can't be expected to train by themselves and prepare for a reduced season if they're not being paid at all. Now, it comes as league executives as early as tomorrow, I'm told, prepared to he- prepare to head to the major banks with first stop NAB, one of their sponsors, of course, for a line of credit in the vicinity of half a billion dollars. Hutchie, this simply isn't going away, and the AFL's messaging to the Players Association in recent minutes has been a clear one, and that is, we can't pay you money we don't have. Yes, and lots of their own staff and the club's staff have been stood down, so the players... Uh, there's an argument that the players shouldn't be paid at all for the next eight weeks, and that would be a ruthless... I think, I think that was the yeah. AFL's opening position. I would say 25% of what they were going to earn would be a reasonable position for the players. The players are being told, they were told today they're expected to represent at the clubs in a month. I guess that's for a fitness test. I don't think it's too much to ask that they represent at the clubs in a month. Channel 7 have stopped paying. Fox Footy have stopped paying. They've already paid their first instalment, 25%, and they won't see any more money, the AFL, from the broadcasters, at the very least, until footy is played again. And we all know that might be well beyond the May 31 deadline. It's not... It shouldn't be about money, but it's fast becoming about money. You can look at us sitting here at social distance and doing our small bit to, to honour the society. And we... We understand people out there doing a lot tougher than the players. The players are inconsequential, so is our industry in this. So please don't excuse if you're watching tonight uh, our lack of empathy for the community. This is just our industry that we've got to make sense of in the circumstances. How do the players... uh, The players don't know when they'll be back is the complicated thing. If If May 31 was hard and firm, you could work through a model because they'd know they got revenue from June. But there is a very real chance this this season is July, August, September... Uh, at best, uh, I know, no one trusts that Gill will deliver the games he's promised. But these players walked out today. Careers could be over. Players want to play their last game. It's daunting for, Craig, for everybody. Craig, at, look at the Brisbane Lions today. They there are five people working now in the footy department. Five in administration. That's it. And those who are still there are working four days a week. The senior coach, I'm told, has taken a 50% pay cut and he is one of several coaches who are now admitting 20% was optimistic. Every assistant coach at every club has gone home and will not be paid until at least May 31. I've been a fan of a lot of what Paul Marsh has achieved for the players, but I think to even complain or suggest that they're hard done by, that they have to stay fit is just so out of step, Damien, with what is going on around Australia, let alone the AFL. Yeah, and look, they're, they're wading through the issues like every single person in, in the world is too, Carrie, but there's certainly that view um, from, from, from some at club level and, and, and the AFL that they've been slow to actually understand the, the gravity of this. And while that may seem strange, that, that is the, the suggestion out there, that even tonight, that they don't have a firm positioning on what needs to be done just to get through it's... this next period. The, the clubs will go under inside three months if, if the guarantees aren't found by the AFL. You can look at his comments in isolation. In fact, we'll have a look at one of his comments. This is Paul Marsh recently. In fact, I think it was last week, Caro, when he spoke It was about on the eve of the Richmond-Carlton game on 3AW. We were talking about the dispute that was already starting. Yeah, disgusted, to be honest. You know, this has been a very tough week. The players will take cuts here. Everyone is in this together. We need time to work through this. Uh, and I'm not going to back away from that. Like, we've got all these players who've got individual circumstances. And I think just some respect for what they're going through here as well. Look, there's respect for what everyone is going through at the moment. Sam, can I ask you whether the bad blood perhaps started last week when the players weren't taken into the decision about 17 games? 
Yeah, I think you're spot on, Caro, to be honest. I mean, Gillian McLaughlin announced that there'd be a reduced 17-game season and then it came out 48 hours later. The Players Association were telling people that they never knew about that until the press conference. So it's an internal politics that's a very small but significant strand in this story. Uh, And clearly the latest part of that story, the latest instalment, is that the AFL isn't happy. Okay, thanks, Sam. We'll get back to you a little bit later on in the program, and if not in a moment, if if time permits. Uh, Damo, you work day-to-day in the AFL building. It would have been a sombre feeling in there today. They went through similar measures, obviously had to be setting the tone and the temperature for the club, so it had to be harder than anyone. Uh, What was the mood like? How many, what percentage of the workforce have been stood down and and how are you feeling about it as someone that, that works there in the media department? Yeah, it's look, rough numbers, 80% or thereabouts of, of, of the about 1,000 staff across the entire country. Obviously, most of them are, are congregated or had been congregated in there at AFL headquarters. So, And the 20% who, who remain um, have also had taken significant pay cuts as well. So that's just to sign off on that side of it. But it's the, the clubs that are the biggest concern from the financial perspective now, Hutchie, and, and you would be able to explain this better than, than anyone when it comes to liquidity and, and cash flow, and they don't have the cash, they don't have the cash flow to get through three months. Three months might be a stretch for some of these clubs, and while there's some numbers there, they're, they're, uh, they're rounded numbers, the, the bottom line there of the 260 million is, is the the estimate that we've put on this tonight, Hutchie, just speaking to, to many people collectively, that that is the financial black hole as we speak, even with all these measures that have been put in place today. That's, with that, that's, that's what the, it stands at at the moment. Are you and saying that's the cash shortfall or the damage bill? That's the cash shortfall yeah. at, at the moment, as best we can put the yeah. figures together. With every measure that's been taken today and without the guarantees that are, the AFL clearly needs inside probably a month, carry to ensure these yeah. clubs survive. This will be a billion-dollar hit to the game. There's no other way to... To look at it, other than other than that, Karen. Will, will the clubs all survive? It's too soon. The commitment is there from the AFL to to collaboratively approach this, and and, and I, I take them at their word when they say they will take eighteen clubs into next season. But we've already seen what we're talking about tonight is so different to what we were talking about last night, and and as for forty eight hours ago, it's a totally different story. For and the what, first time, Craig, I'm legitimately concerned about that. Talking to are people, you worried about mergers as well in this? Yep, I, I think that's absolutely not something we can discount anymore. I, I look at Gold Coast and GWS and w- wonder about their future. One CEO said to me today, today was the worst day of my life. A club president said to me, I'm on the phone every half hour with a hookup and people are asking me questions and I have no answers. What about yourself? You had to call your staff in and ask your SEN broadcasters. Common, you've had to let go a lot of people to take pay cuts. Will your business survive? Obviously, you've got the footy record as well, which has been terrible. Yeah, so, I mean, first thing I'd say to that is I don't even want to get drawn on our woes versus the communities. No, no, but SEN is for many people yeah, but the, re- the, the, the go-to sports station. I, I feel very lucky. Like, we are um, privileged to do what we do and our station and our syndication business and our uh, various assets will will live to fight a, a better day. My hearts are with the community, um, not just the people in our business who are working through uh, our situations and our troubles and we're like everyone having to make sacrifices and changes and work through things. So pretty, will you go off air during, pretty, pretty, no, during Absolutely not. Times? I'm 100% committed to being a companion to the community in everything we do. Uh, I'm determined that we will continue to broadcast every last thing that we do on every last platform we can. Obviously, the AFL and the NRL is, a, is an exception on the weekend. Um, but my heart just goes to the people in the, in the, in the workforce. It, this has been no fault of anyone's. There are people sitting at home tonight who were unlucky to be in the wrong industry, who were part of the shops shutting down today, who were considered essential or non-essential. There were some line ball calls from the state government. It's soul-destroying for people. But we are a society that will stick together, we'll have each other's backs, we'll find a way through. There'll be a better day, there'll be a much better day. It might not be for a while, and, and, and employers like me and like us will want, want more and more people in the future. And that's going to be something that's going to take some time. And it's really hard for people to get their head around that. And it doesn't mean much, but that's real. 